Saturday at 12 o'clock. So I wanted to let you be aware of that this morning. Amen. And uh, also wanted to say, man, you guys, uh, I know this is kind of irrelevant, but uh, boy, y'all, y'all, made, y'all made this preacher proud last night. I, I'm telling you, with all the great help and the support that was there last evening, and uh, that was just that was totally awesome. It reminded me of the old church. Amen. Got now nah, didn't sound good, did, but it's true. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Now like we just kind of got back in the swing of it. Amen. So it was just so awesome. You guys, just uh, your work, your involvement was awesome. And I'm gonna tell you what, we had a tremendous influx of folks last evening, young people coming in, kids and. Uh, even some that uh, I kind of question, what are they doing with them bags in there going around getting that candy? I, they didn't like much being as old as me. No, they wasn't quite that old. But uh, amen. But hey, we were glad. They were glad they came anyway and was there and was a part of it. And uh, I just can't help but uh, give, give a little bit of recognition. There was 15 vehicles there. And uh, one of them, and we were very blessed, uh, one of them was there the entire time. It was from the city of Mulberry Police. Uh, amen. So they were there. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Were there the whole time. And uh, so that was a blessing that they were there, was a part of the uh, festivities last evening. And uh, man, we, we sure had a, uh, we had a lot of input that came in last evening. It was awesome, praise the Lord. But your great help, your commitment made it all possible. Just a, uh, just a thanks to each one. Thank you so, so very much for your sacrifice and for what you did. God bless you so very, very much. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. You ready to worship this morning? Amen. Let's have church. What'd you say? Amen. Let's stand together, shall we? As we stand together, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Invite His presence collectively. Let's ask God to minister and have His way. Let's pray. Father God, we love You this morning. Thank You because we know You're the great and the mighty I Am. You're the Almighty God. We pray this morning, Lord, we just pray, Lord, just allow heaven to come down. Let Your glory just fill hearts and souls because You are the power. Lord, You are the glory. We want You to be exalted. We want You to be lifted up in this service this morning, Lord. We want to thank you this morning for that presence we know that is already here because you said where we assemble together there in your name there you are right in the midst and we know you're here we thank you we love you we give you praise because you are the great and the wonderful the mighty salvation that gives and comes unto us lord on a day by day basis we love you thank you for the blood we give you praise and all of god's children said amen, amen. Make your neighbor know you're glad to see him this morning. God bless you. Sister Diane's going to lead us. Uh, let's worship. Let's have church. God bless you. Yes, yes. Well, my God's not dead. We still alive. God's not dead. He's still alive. Well, my God's not dead. He's still alive. I can feel him in my hands. I can feel him in my feet. I can feel him all over me. Now my God's not dead. Oh, he's still alive. God's not dead. He's still alive. Oh, my God's not dead. He's still alive. I can feel him in my hands. I can feel him in my feet. I can feel him all over me. Now I remember the day that I met him. I remember the day I made this star. Well, I remember the day at an old-fashioned altar when he changed my heart. Amen. Dead. He's still alive, God's not dead. He's still alive, God's not dead. He's still alive, I can feel him in my hands, I can feel him in my feet, I can feel him all over me. Now there's no need to say he's not living. There's no need to say he's dead. Cause I just talked to 
this morning to agree our power and he said he's alive and he's well oh my god's not dead he's still alive god's not dead he's still alive no my god's not dead he's still alive i can feel him in my hands i can feel him in my feet can feel him all over me. And I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. What the Lord has done for me. For he bought my soul at Calvary. What he done for me. This morning, turn to page 212. Page 212. Keep on the firing line. Oh, thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Keep on the firing line. Well, you must fight 
he prayed against all evil and never runs or even might be high if you would win. Hallelujah. Turn back to page 154 and a new name in glory. Oh, Amen. Thank you, Lord. 154. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I was once a sinner, but I came pardon to receive from my Lord. And this was freely given. I found that he always kept his word. New name written down in glory, and it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. And the white robed angels sing a story. A sinner has come home. Yes, there's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine, and with my sin forgiven, I am bound for heaven, never more to roam. I was humbly kneeling at the cross, fearing not but God's angry frown, and when the heavens opened, and I saw that my name was written down. Well, there's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine, oh yes, it's mine. And the white robed angels sing the story, oh, a sinner has come home. Yes, there's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine, oh yes, it's mine. Oh, with my sin forgiven, I am bound for heaven, never more to roam. And the book is written, yes, saved by grace, oh, the joys that came to my soul. Now I am forgiven, and I know, yes, by the blood I am made whole. Well, there's a new name written down in glory and mine. oh yes it's mine and the white robed angels sing a story yes a sinner has come home well there's a new name written down in glory and it's mine oh yes it's mine and with my sins forgiven I am bound for hell that blood amen yes. to wash away our sin amen yes. he has set us Lord. free page 235 yes. <clears throat> once like a bird in prison i dwelt, I dwelt no freedom from my sorrow i felt but jesus came and listened to me He set me free, he set me free, and he set me free, and he broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound by Jesus to see, glory to God, will he set me free. And now I am climbing higher each day, the darkest of night has drifted away. My feet are planted on higher ground. Glory to God. Well, I'm home now. He set me free, yes, he set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound, yes, my Jesus to see. And glory to God. Well, he set me free. Well, goodbye to sin. This world shall turn me around. Well, daily I'm working. Yes, I'm praying to and glory to God. Well, I'm going through, and He set me free. Lord, He set me free. He's broke those bonds. 
sing to God, I'm going through. When he set me free, well, he set me free. He's broke those bonds of prison for me. I'm going bound, yes, my Jesus, to see and glory to God. He set me free. Give the Lord a good hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for His blessings and thank the Lord that He, he set us free. Hallelujah. Whom the Son has set free, they are free indeed. Hey, we are free this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And we just need to act like it. Hallelujah. You're doing a good job of it. God bless you this morning. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord for His blessings and for what we can feel in this sanctuary this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We do want to give you the opportunity this morning to worship in our giving. So if our ushers would take their places this morning, it's always a joy and a privilege we can minister in giving. Can I hear a good amen? Hallelujah. So we want you just to worship the Lord, magnify Him together. We know that He'll bless this morning in our faithfulness that we've come together. We know God's going to honor that in our time of giving. So we want you to bless Him this morning. God bless you in doing so. Brother Bobby, would you stand and ask God bless us on the giving, please, sir? Yes, Lord. Grant it, Jesus. Yes. Grant it, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you this morning. Praise the Lord. And uh, Sister Martha's other half is going to be singing for us this morning. I can't wait on her no longer. I, I hear you. Sometimes that happens that way. <laughs> she probably programmed it that way. You just didn't know it. <laughs> bless you, Brother Keith. Amen. There's a lighthouse on the hilltop that overlooks life's sea. When I'm tossed, it sends a light out that I might see. And the light that shines in darkest night will safely lead me home. If it was for that lighthouse, my ship would sail no more. And I thank God for the lighthouse. I owe my life to Him. Jesus is the lighthouse, and from the rocks of sin. He has shown His light around me That I might clearly see If it wasn't for the lighthouse Where would this ship be? Everybody that lives around me says, tear that lighthouse down. You know the big ships don't sail this way anymore. There's no use in standing round. Then my mind goes back to that stormy night when just in time I saw the light. Was a light from that old lighthouse standing there on a hill. And I thank God for the lighthouse. I owe my life to Him. Jesus is a lighthouse. And from the rocks of sin, He has shown His light around me, that I might clearly see, if it wasn't 
for the lighthouse tell me where would this ship be if it wasn't for the lighthouse tell me where would this ship be Thank God for that lighthouse. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good job, Brother Keith. Amen. Good, good. Brother Kent, Sister Laverne, hallelujah. God bless you guys. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Aren't you thankful for that great lighthouse? Amen. He is the light that comes forth. It'll never even grow dim. Amen. Always bright and shining. Thank the Lord for the greatness of the almighty God. Amen. Amen. We do want to go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Ask God he would touch and minister unto needs. We know he is the need supplier. There are several that are going through some battles and struggles that we want to uh, hold them up unto the Lord in prayer. Again, just a reminder as far as the, uh, the service coming up on uh, Saturday at noon. The memorial service is going to be for Brother Eddie's son. Be here at the uh, church here. So just wanted to remind you about that again and uh, also wanted to uh, make mention to you this morning there are some needs we'll need to be uh, praying for and asking God to touch and to minister uh, I know that uh, brother uh, brother Lonnie Hop we we'll, we're gonna have a uh, closing prayer for him especially this morning brother Lonnie is really going through some battles with his back going through a lot of pain so we'll pray for him at our closing prayer this morning especially but also there are others this morning we need to be praying for that the Lord's going to going to touch and minister I know uh, sister Beck and me at Tiffany is uh, she is not feeling well at all it's kind of sick in body so let's pray for Tiffany this morning as well that uh, God would touch and to uh, minister to her there are those we've been praying for that God would touch you to minister. We know that there's a young man named Connor, also a young man named, uh, named Austin, some others but battling with, some, with cancer, some others that are battling with cancer this morning, but we know that Jesus is the answer no matter how bad that it may be. We know the Lord is the name above every name. That includes cancer as well. Amen. So we want to pray and believe God. He's going to touch you to minister. And in these lives, we'll keep Brother Evans in our prayer. We know God's going to intervene there to give him a, a healing. Also, we know that there are others that we've been praying for on a regular basis, basis that God's going to touch and to minister into them. You have your prayer list. We will not attempt to go through a lot of these this morning. But you see those that we've been praying for on a regular basis. And thank the Lord that he has been hearing he's been answering prayer as a matter of fact there's an answered prayer that's right up here his name is Earl Hitchcock amen good to see you brother Earl hallelujah welcome welcome back to the spot where you was void for all that time amen you fill it in great amen praise the Lord and keeping him and sister Norvella in our prayers for sure that God continue to minister unto them in a special way God is the answer this morning no matter of the severity or how minute the need may seem to be this morning let's pray let's believe God this morning he is able to do what is needed within our lives so let's go and pray and believe God to do so amen it's good to uh, see sister Peters again this morning I know she was here last Sunday but she's been overcoming a big battle as well praise the Lord God's good amen so very very good so thank the Lord for his blessings uh, that makes it all real and makes it all possible I want to just maybe with a show of hands you have some special unspoken requests lost loved ones you have in the need you'll stand at the gap for prayer this morning um, God knows the intent Tent of the heart he knows what's going on need to pray for our nation keep our nation in your prayer that God's going to touch you and minister I don't have to tell you if you've listened to any kind of news reports boy you got to pay attention to what you listen to be careful now preacher don't go on a rabbit trail here this morning but I'm telling you, there's so much fake stuff out there that you can't pay attention to what but there are some real stuff if you listen to tune in to the right stuff uh, that lets us know 
our nation is in a real dire need of God. So let's pray for our nation. Pray for the leaders. God will minister and intercede this morning. Continue to pray for our missionaries at home and abroad that God's going to touch and minister to them this morning. And continue to pray as well that God's going to move and to give us souls in a special way. Again, we pray. God is the answer this morning. No matter. We know he is the answer. Sister Diane is going to prepare our hearts, lead us in a course. Let's get ready to pray and believe in a trust God this morning. Sister Diane. Well, the only real peace that I have, dear Lord, is in you. Yes, yes. Only, only real peace yes, it is. that I have, dear Lord, is in you. Oh, we love you, Lord. to the Lord if you can and let's pray come on Pentecostals let's call on God this morning let's believe and stand in the gap for these needs Lord we know you're the almighty God there's not anything too hard for you and Lord we cast all that care upon you because you're the one that cares for us Lord we know that there are many many needs Lord Father they're so numerous Lord that we will not even be able to mention all of them but Lord we know that you're the great creator we're the creatures of and Lord, we yield to you this morning, Lord, as yielded vessels say, Holy Spirit, to do your perfected work. Lord, to touch into these lives, touch into these souls, Lord. There are those that are bad with cancer, God. Some that has gone through the surgeries, overcoming, Lord. Those, Lord, that are looking at the difficulties with the heart problems, Lord. God, let healings come. There are those this morning we know, Lord. Lord, a battle with difficulties, Lord, within the physical man that really goes beyond what man can do, but not anything too hard for you, Lord. We know that, Lord, everything is naked and open unto you, Lord, under the hand that is outstretched unto us, Lord. Let healing come through the power of your Holy Ghost Spirit, Lord, that there be a presence and an awareness, Lord, for the need that we know that it rises up that is even right here within our midst, Lord. We thank you for hearing and answering and ministry in prayer, Lord. Lord, we're forgetful not to thank you for what you've done, Lord, for every, every name that is on our prayer list that is given to us, Lord. God, place your hand upon every name, Lord, upon every individual, God. Let them feel the presence of your spirit, Lord. Let them feel the care and the compassion. Let them feel the peace, Lord that does surpass all understanding, Lord, to move into their hearts and into their lives, Lord, because we know you are the answer this morning, Lord. Let there be that compassion and that great recognition that is needed. Move up over, Father, move our missionaries at home and abroad, touch their lives, Lord. Let them feel, O oh Lord, the compassion hand, Lord, for those that are being held captive over in Haiti, Lord. Those 17, God, we pray for your mercies extended, Lord. Lord, you're the answer. You're the answer this morning, God. Let your intercessions, God, do your perfected work, Lord. Give us the victories that only, only you can give us this morning, Lord. Lord, we pray for our nation this morning, this nation. This nation needs you, oh God. Lord, we pray for your presence and to come forth and minister with a conviction and a stirring and a compassion for a spiritual healing 
in a spiritual healing, oh Lord. Lord, we pray for our children, our young people, our schools, oh God. Move against this virus, God, that's still and ranting them. But God, we know you're the answer this morning. And we stand against that virus in the power of your name, in the name of Jesus, in the power of your precious blood, your blood, Jesus. Lord, we know you are the one, God. Through your blood cover, your blood protections, and read it even now, God. Lord, I speak to those for how to face God. Give those, Father, that you, by the way of live stream, that's part of this body of believers, God. Touch in their lives. Give protection in God. In your name, Jesus. In your name, Jesus. Lord, give us souls, Lord. Palm the dead. Reach out and touch. Oh, read it, oh God. Read it, oh Lord. Oh, you believe he's passing by? Good. Oh, yes. The Lord, Lord, we love you this morning. As he, he oh, goes we bless by, you, Lord. You'll find he's not too busy to answer your cry. He's passing by this moment. Your needs to supply. Yes, he is. Reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by. Oh, he's the almighty God. Let's pray for Brother Lonnie Hop right now. Father God, Brother Lonnie, Lord, belongs to you. He's going through some real physical battles, Lord, and in a lot of pain. We know this morning, Lord, you're able to touch him right where he is, Lord. Father, to lift him up, God. Take away that pain. Lord, we just rebuke you to the power of your name, Jesus, Lord. And Lord, we pray that you give him a peace and a comfort to up over that physical body, Lord. They can feel refreshed and renewed for that which only, only you can make possible, Lord. We yield him to you now, Lord, for that peace and the comfort, Lord, for the relaxation, God, that only, only, only you can give by in and through your spirit and watch you go over your word to confirm it to, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Now slip a hand up toward heaven, thanking God for hearing and answering prayer this morning. Lord, we thank you this morning. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you for loving us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, because we know that your hand is not waxing short. Hang on, center of those promises. We magnify you. We praise you. We glorify you. You are the worthy, 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 worthy lamb. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, all of God's children believe it together. Said amen. amen. Then shout praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for his blessings. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Almost a few full choir this morning. God bless you, choir. Thank you so much for your ministry to us this morning. A blessing, blessing, blessing. And to our, our musicians this morning. At almost a, well, we did. We had a we had a few a full musician bunch this morning. Hallelujah. Good, good, good. Good to see Brother Earl back in the saddle again. Amen. Praise the Lord. and Thank God for the, for the blessings that uh, bestowed upon us that makes it all possible. What a Savior. What a God. What a mighty, mighty, mighty God we serve. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good to see Brother John. Is that your dad, Brother John? Amen. See you last night. Brother James, God bless you, my brother. Welcome. Hallelujah. Good to see you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good, good to have our, our Nashville member back again. Sister Barbara, amen. Good to have her back with us again today. Amen. She lives in the Nashville area, but uh, this, is, this is her church. Amen. And uh, thank the Lord that uh, we, have, uh, we have members that are outside that is not seated in here. But thank the Lord. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Brother Dwayne, Sister Debbie, bless you guys. Good to see you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good to have Crystal with us. The Bakers uh, having their granddaughter with her this morning. I was teasing her. I was telling her that, uh, boy, her sister, was that, ain't that your sister that was here last week? Your sister didn't want you to cut up like she did. She just, man, just caused all kinds of havoc and chaos last Sunday. And I was just teasing her. She was just like her this morning. She was just real quiet and timid. Amen. She's not like that all the time, though, is she, Grandma and Grandpa? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. It's a good to see you. God bless you. 
Praise the Lord. Good to see each one and thank the Lord for the opportunity that avails us that we can be here in God's house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, are you glad you're here? Amen. Praise the Lord. Is that your daughter, Sister Sharon? Amen. I thought so. Amen. Just been a little while since I saw her. That was all. Praise the Lord. Thank God for his blessing. Amen. And for the for the opportunity that avails that we can be here this morning to uh, to worship Him, magnify Him together, Amen. And it would be uh, it'd be awful lonesome if I was here and not going to have to preach to myself, Amen. So uh, I'm glad you're here this morning, Amen. Now uh, I, I might need to uh, I might need to get a little echo every once in a while, like Amen, praise the Lord, preach it, preacher, Hallelujah, <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Well, you may not have to get that dramatic, but uh, hallelujah. God bless you this morning. It is uh, such a blessing and a privilege that we can be in, be in uh, the house of the Lord. If you have your Bible, if you'd like to turn with us, we'd like to go to the, uh, to the book of Peter this morning. First Peter, First Peter in chapter number one. First Peter in chapter number one. Again, I want to say a hearty thanks so very much for all for the work and the support for the uh, outing last evening. God bless you so much. Amen. Amen. And man, we had a we had an outpouring of folks, amen, that came. And that was a blessing. And I mean, you guys, just professionally, you handled that well. And it's not because we had the cop car right in the middle to be sure either, okay? <laughs> amen. Thank the Lord for our local police that was there from start to finish and handing out the candy and things there with us. We appreciate that very, very, very much. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you this morning. Amen. If you've turned there in the book of Peter, amen. If you've turned there and you found it, let's stand for the reading of the word. Shall we? Praise the Lord. First Peter chapter 1, begin reading in verse number 13. Verse number 13. Are you ready? Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, are you obedient? Say amen. amen. And now the rest of you can repent before we leave, all right? <laughs> Not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust of your ignorances, but as he which hath called you is holy. So be ye holy in all manner of conversations. And that's a manner of living in that word conversation. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father, who without respect of person judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. For as much as you know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversations, received by tradition from your fathers. But you've been redeemed with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in the last times for you and for I, who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that everybody say my faith, my faith. and everybody say my hope, my hope might be in God. I want to talk to you this morning on a thought that I need to just refresh your memory in and that is this, there is the right kind of life. We need to live the right kind of life. Can I hear an amen? amen? Let's pray. Father God, we love you this morning. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your presence we, we witness and we know that is in this room. Thank you for each one that is viewing by the way of live stream. Your blessings on them as we yield to you now, Lord, in the ministry of giving and receiving of your blessed and your holy word. We thank you now as we give you praise for the cover of the precious blood and its protection upon us. That makes it all possible in Jesus' name. And all of God's children said amen. Amen, amen. You may be seated. Thank you so much for standing, reference to the Lord for the reading of God's holy word. Amen, amen, amen. We notice that the scriptures has given us when we're talking about the right kind 
of living. He doesn't say if you want to. He doesn't say really that is the choice. Because verse 16 that we read to you, God didn't give us a soft choice. He just simply said, be holy. Why? Because He said, I am holy. If Jesus is holy, we're to be like Christ. You say, oh, there's no way. I can't be holy like Christ. Let every man be a liar, but of God be the truth. If God said you can be holy, you can be holy. There might be some things we need to work on. There might need to be some adjustments, some, some things we might need to do. But there's one thing for sure. We even read there in Hebrews. We need to read in Hebrews in chapter 12 and verse number 14. He says, follow after peace with all men and holiness. Everybody say holiness. Without which no man shall see the Lord. We must be holy in order to see the Lord. That's the reality that we're dealing with this morning. The right kind of life. Let's look at living in holiness this morning. Let's see the advantage. Or let's see what kind of profit that we have in being able to live holy as He is holy this morning. Now no one can be as holy as our Lord and our Savior, as the Almighty God. We understand that. But we can be holy in the eyes of God. We are separated when we come under the knowledge of the salvation that He has given to us. And He's written our name in the book of the redeemed this morning. What do we got to do? We have got to be able to find ourselves that we can do something spiritually. And we'll do it spiritually. Guess what? Uh, there's something we'll deal with in reality. And that is our attitude. Let us, <laughs> let us look at it in a way that we know that is possible. Now listen to me. I know sometimes people, when they talk about holy, be holy, to live holy, people kind of shiver a little bit. Uh, sometimes kind of draw false conclusions when they think about holy and being holy. When they hear be holy, live holy, act holy, talk holy, they begin to think about what we used to be taught. You don't hear it near as much today. But in my younger years, you always thought of it as far as being long hair. You always saw it as something like you got to wear long sleeves. You always heard it talked about you can't have that television in your house. Those were the things that said you cannot wear jewelry. Oh, you've come a long way. I don't know if it's good or not, but it is coming into the perspective that you deal with. Thank the Lord that on that control, there's a thing that you can turn it off when that television is there in that living room. Sometimes people forget that there's an off button that is there. But I want you to understand this morning, when we're talking about living holy, being holy, it's not the way that you're going to look from that perspective or the way that you're going to dress. Although we know that godliness is going to represent the way that we conduct ourselves into that manner. This is the part of our manner of life this morning. It's about what? It's about seeing souls saved. It's about being drawing nearer and closer to God. It's talking about the growth of the church. It's talking about where we are in the Lord, where that we can be able to say without doubt or reservations, we're here and it's no room for the devil. We know the devil come to church. We know his demons come to church. But they're not the one that is in authority. They're not the one that is in control. I'm saying to you this morning, uh, that the devils, uh, they have to know and understand uh, that it is the power of God uh, and it is through Him uh, and His living uh, and His being uh, that is in this building even this morning right now as we talk to you. We must be holy and if we are holy. I'm saying uh, there's no devil, uh, no matter who he is, uh, how big he is, uh, how powerful he thinks he is. Uh, he cannot stand uh, in authority. He cannot take away. He cannot steal away. Whatever blessing the Holy Spirit of God wants to put upon His child and upon His children by one or by the whole because God is the one that is in control. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Can I hear a good amen? 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So we look at holy. Holy is not a show. Holy is not a look. Holy this morning is not an act. Holy this morning is not something that we look at on the outside, but holy is a life. It's the right kind of life. Can I hear another good amen? Our attitude this morning. It's not being able to sing three courses. It's not being able to get all excited and emotional. It's not being able to find ourselves where we're going to be able to, to shout and then carry on. That then the devil's going to be scared. When the devils get scared, then they're going to slip out. And then there's going to be in the full control over to them. No, no, no. It's not coming in the area where the one that's going to be preaching, he's got to have a suit and a tie on. Don't matter about that. That don't make you righteous. Don't make you holy. But I'm saying to you this morning, uh, there is one thing that makes it right. Uh, because the power of the Holy Spirit uh, is what makes it real. Uh, and when the power of the Holy Spirit uh, makes it real, uh, it's not because they may say, oh, that's a bunch of holy rollers over there. You don't want to go over that church. I tell you what, I'd kind of like to see a little bit of a holy rolling going on. But at any rate, um, it's still a reality that no, it's not that. Um, but I want to give to you a few things um, that's going to make it right uh, when it comes to the right kind of life uh, that we need to live this morning. Have I got you attention now let's look at a couple of things this morning what about the how of a holy walk what about that how if you and I if we will go into it how are we going to go into it three things we're going to go into it with faith we're going to go into it with a pure conscience we're going to go into it this morning with the right everybody say attitude when we have, I'm saying to you this morning, church, it's our mindset, the way we come into the house of the Lord. Sometimes we walk in the doors and we walk in the door and we look around and say, oh, there she is. Oh, there he is. I had a good day that I walked in and there they were. No, 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 no. Somebody shout me down now, all right? Whenever we find ourselves, um, that if we walk in here and we know that it is the presence of God um, and we live according to what God is saying, it is the walk of faith. Um, it's because we're not living for somebody else um, or to influence somebody else. Uh, it's because our conscience is pure before God. Um, and if our conscience is pure before God, um, then that simply means uh, I've got a right attitude. Um, my attitude tells me I'm thankful that I can be in the house of the Lord this morning. I'm thankful that I can be in the house of God and I'm thankful that I can be among righteous people that love God. I'm glad I can be among people that can pray and get a hold of God. Thank the Lord that there are those that the request, they might even not even come to the church, but they say, I know your church is a praying church. Thank God for that witness that we'll pray and we'll stand in the gap for them as well. We do it in faith. We do it because we've got a pure conscience and we do it because we're going to have the right attitude. It is as unto the Lord because we love one another. Can I hear a good amen? Let me give you three things right quick um, that, is, that is in the foundation here of verse number 13, um, if you would please. Because first of all, you notice in verse number 13, he said, Wherefore, gird up uh, the loins uh, of your mind. Gird up the loins uh, of your mind. Um, what does that word gird up mean? It means to brace up. Um, what is going on in the strengths um, and the strongholds uh, of your mind? Um, you know what it comes to? And what it boils down to, it comes to the place. It's it's, it's kind of like bro, brother Rick, brother Rick Shockley, and uh, kind of like brother uh, brother Steve, and uh, maybe even Andrew too. That maybe it broke some of them horses. And when you get on that horse, um, he's a bucking and he's a carrying on. Um, you don't do any good just because he throws you off. Uh, you got to get back on me. Ain't that right, guys? Amen. And whenever he throws you off, you got to get back on again. You ride that dude, you ride that dude until he quits bucking. Then when he quits, quits bucking, then guess what? You and he are good friends. You can ride him without any difficulty. You know what? You say, 
What are you talking about, preacher? I'm simply saying, uh, so many times we're wrestling. Uh, sometimes we just cannot really fathom uh, some of the things that are so simple to get a hold of. We think, oh, I can't live holy. Oh, no, I can't live that righteous life that those people talk about they live. Uh, I can't do that. Oh, yes, you can. You know what you've got to do? You've got to get on that bucking horse uh, and you've got to stay on him uh, until he quits bucking. And let the power of the Holy Spirit and the precious blood do the cleansing that needs to be within your life. Because what happens is we look at the place for opportunity. When we look at opportunity for the ministry that we can be a part of and that becomes a part of us this morning, this has to do with two things in particular. Number one, it has to do with the frame of our mind. Whenever we're bracing up the loins of our mind. But then number two, the all important one is for the condition of our heart. Your heart's got to be right. If your heart's not right, then it's all a waste of time. Then it's all just going through a routine. It's all going through a ritual. I know this is just going to just blow a lot of you out of your saddle this morning. But in reality is, church is nothing more but a routine. It's nothing more than a ritual for millions of people. But I'm saying to you this morning, whenever you know where you need to be in the Spirit of God, and there's righteousness and truth, and there's holiness uh, that shall prevail uh, we come to the place uh, that we are going to find ourselves uh, in the walk um, that we need to walk uh, in the holy walk uh, we can act holy we can talk holy we can act holy the way we should um, because guess what um, we're going to be walking uh, living uh, and acting uh, like we should uh, but today I fear too many times uh, people still got their they got their grave clothes on when Jesus called Lazarus forth from that grave, there I don't know how you pick, he didn't come out of walking out. He was bound in him grave claws. Some of you may be bound in the, bound in the grave claw. And when he came, and he came forth and is standing there, what did Jesus do? Jesus said, loose him. Loose him. There's a lot of people that need to be loose from their grave claws. They're wearing their grave claws. They seem to be bound. They don't seem like they can have the liberty and the freedom just to really, really worship and magnify the Lord. And I'm not talking about you've got to, you've got to act like the, like, like the preacher or that you've got to run the aisles and so Although it'd be all right to run the aisles a little bit. Anyway, the bottom line is it comes to the fourth, uh, whether we know that the scripture says, uh, he says there in, he says there in 2 Corinthians, uh, he says, come out from among them, be ye separate. Uh, you know why? Because you and I, when we come out from among them and we are to be separate, then the Lord says, Touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. I'm saying to you this morning, church, God will receive you. He's received you because you're here in this sanctuary this morning. I don't care whatever lying devil may be telling you that you can't walk out of here victorious. You can't walk out of here with the powers of the Holy Spirit in your life with victory and peace and love and compassion. I'm telling you, that's a lying devil. I'm saying to you this morning, you have come out from among them. When you come out from among them, you've come into this sanctuary you come out away from that world as the only way we can be at this point from the difference that we are. But too many times, too many people are bound by the world. They're bound by their attitudes. If we keep ourselves pure and if we stay holy, we won't have time to be looking around and let others judge us or judge them. Let God do the judgings. Get me here a good amen. If we'll let God do the judging, then guess what? God's going to bring forth a righteous, holy, and victorious and be able to see the exaltations of His glory in His church. Can I hear a good amen? amen. Let me give you this. Sometimes you feel like it can't happen. Sometimes you seem a little bit reserved. I'm not talking about how you comb your hair. 
or how you put your clothes on. But now you are going to wear clothes now, okay? Don't get me mixed up here, okay? But let me show you this. Uh, because when we're looking at uh, living uh, under the Lord, uh, we're talking about holiness. Uh, you know what? Holiness uh, is sanctification. Sanctification is being set apart. Uh, but let me show you something about this. Uh, Holiness comes from a Greek word. I won't try to pronounce that Greek word, but I want to show you something that is in the latter portion of it. The latter portion of that, as you see on the screen, is A-S-M-O-S, asmos, asmos. The latter portion of this Greek word, this is a noun. Now, it's interesting, because let me teach you something this morning. The Greek nouns that end in asmos is a continuing process. What do we have here? We have the word holiness in the original Greek language that ends in the word asmos. So what is happening here? There is a continuing process that is in your life. Through the continuing process that is in your life, guess what's translated here? What's translated here is to let us know we are living a life that is through holiness. It's a process. It's a day by day. You probably have not no way reached the peak. There's no way you possibly can. But through that process that God has placed in your spirit that is called His blood. And because the blood has been applied to your life, I'm telling you the devils don't like it. The devils can't stand it. Because the devil cannot cross the bloodline. You say, preacher, you keep talking about it. Yes! And I'm going to keep on talking about it. Because it makes the devil nervous whenever the blood of Jesus Christ is what is in the, in the control of an individual's life and in the control of a church. You know, you've got preachers today that are behind metropolitan pulpits that won't even preach about the blood. They won't even talk about sin. They talk about everybody is righteous and holy anyway. Well, they don't even mention the word holy on the rare occasions. But I am simply saying to you this morning, church, if you're born again, the blood's applied to your life. I'm saying to you, you're on the road of holiness. And because you're on the road of holiness, you're in a progress. There's a process in your life. It's every day that we live. Because one day we're going to stand before the most holy of all holies. And that's the Lord God Almighty. And if we'll do that, guess what? It's going to change our attitude. Maybe we should ask ourselves, are we any better today than we was yesterday? Are we any better today than we was last week? Are we in better today as a church than we was last month or last year? I even are we any better than that? But may I say this to you this morning? God does not only call us to receive His life through faith, but He also calls us to receive His life and to be able to maintain that life through holiness. Everybody say holiness. holiness. Oh, that shakes the devil up. Hallelujah. Holiness is why that we are here. What do we have to do? We find ourselves a word that we can gird up and brace up the loins of our mind. Next, let me show you right quick here in verse number 13. Because it says it's not only gird up the loins of your mind, but he says, be sober. Everybody say, be sober. Now we're talking about the word be sober. Sober does not only mean as far as being free from the influence of some intoxicating drink. Okay? The word sober here is talking about having a sound mind. Okay? In the generalities when we look in the Scriptures. That's what the word sober is telling. Having a sound mind. But now listen, when you look in the original language and you go here, when you see what he's talking about in verse number 13 here in 1 Peter and in chapter number 1, he is saying to us, it's not just self-control, having a sober mind, we need to be in self-control. But you know what he's saying to us? Are you ready? Buckle up your belt. Are you ready? 
Here's what the original Greek language is saying. Be alert morally. Boy, if there's ever a day we need some cleansing morally, it is in our nation and in our world today. If we'll be alert, pay attention to what is going on around us. And the church, instead of still coming out and being separate and touching not the unclean thing, they got to have smoke coming off of here. And they got to have, oh, let's get the rock and roll bands in here. That's how we can get them in here. When you get to rock and roll bats in here, I'm I'm gone. Amen. And I'm like, what I'm like what Rum Brother told me. He told me in this church, he's not here now, so don't start questioning. But he told me right here in this church here, then some time ago, he said, Now I'll tell you what, I go to a church, but the church I go to, he said, it's pretty good. But he says, I've done made my mind up when smoke starts coming up out from around that out there around that, that pulpit and smokers come up around that stage and so forth. He said, I'm out of there. I'm telling you that. Amen. Hey, what do you say? I'm saying to you, church, the reality is we need to be alert of what's going on. And whenever we're alert about what's going on, that says that we're not going to get mixed up, mingled up, and caught up into this world, in this worldly stuff. Being whole is not something you cannot do and cannot live. You can do it because greater is He that's in you than he that's out there in the world. He that's out there in the world is trying trying to draw you unto Him and to get you into His clutches, to get you into His devices. But I'm saying to you, church, through the power of the Holy Spirit and the precious blood, it brings us to an area to where we can have a right attitude and we've got the right attitude. Guess what? You can come into, you can come into His house and you can know this is the day He's made. I can rejoice and I can be glad about it. Can I hear a good amen? Let me tell you something about this little right attitude. This is a Dade Kendricks here. Okay, All this is Dade Kendricks anyway. But I wanted you to get this this morning. God dropped something in me. Amen. Now we get to certain parts in here. I want you to say amen where you believe it or not. <laughs> There's a right attitude coupled with a holy wheel. We all have a wheel. That's the reason why that uh, we see happen what happens uh, but I felt it's like in something like this. It's like uh, one locomotive that's moving along that, that railroad track. And that one locomotive that's moving around that, on that railroad track, we look at that train, and when we look at that train, sometimes that train, it consists of many cars behind that locomotive. But if there are many cars behind that locomotive, uh, guess what? It's not one engine that is pulling many cars. I've taken time sometimes uh, whenever I see a train that is coming, usually it's a freight train, but whenever I see it coming and I see it's got more than one engine on it, uh, I know right then uh, he's got several cars behind him. I've counted as many as 120 cars behind a freight train before. But on this freight train, guess how many engines that he had? Not one, not two, not three, but four. Fasten your seatbelt. Here's what I felt in my spirit. Guess what's happening? God the Father... Jesus the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Who makes up the fourth? Woo-hoo! Everybody say me. me. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm telling you, whenever the engines are pulling together, when they're pulling together, guess what? They're not a, no, they're not a devil in hell that can keep 
from moving out of the way and allowing God and His Spirit to, to move the way He chooses and the way He wants to. I'm telling you, it's Almighty God. And whenever I begin to think and I realize there's three main engines that is pulling, and because those three main engines is pulling, God has chosen, I want more than just the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. I want a fourth one that's called the church. I want my church to be pulling. I want to be on fire. I want to be ready to do what they need to do when it comes to my kingdom because there's too many that is dying and they're going to a devil's hell. We know that we have people that many of us have maybe loved ones. We have friends that need Christ. They need God. I say to you this morning, we need to be a contributing factor to the main engine. Jesus Christ has made it possible. And because Jesus has made it possible, it's not because of what your talent may be or what my talent may be. It may not be what you may be able to do that is better than somebody else may be able to do. But it is called the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And it is that next engine called the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as long as that engine is moving in sequence with the main engine, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, I'm telling you, church, there's no reason why there shouldn't be more of a manifestation and a demonstration of the power of Almighty God in a household of faith. Can I hear another good amen? amen. Hallelujah. 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 So are you doing it? Or are you dead weight? Uh, are you doing your part? Yeah, you got quiet on me, didn't you? Reality comes into the place where we understand this and that we know what happens uh, many times uh, when we're thinking about using that, that example as far as the engines and the, and the rails. Uh, them engines and those cars, they can't move when they're off of those rails. Uh, there are derailing uh, that takes place. Uh, what happens uh, in that process? Uh, I can have the cars... I can have the cars of love, of faith, and of patience. I can have the cars of temperance and peace in my life. And you can have it in your life. Are you still with me now? As long as I choose the right power, but if I don't cling to the right power, there can be a derailing that takes place when a derailing takes place, uh, we've seen what happens. Uh, we've seen pictures of it. We've even seen it, many of us, uh, in real life. Um, when a train derails uh, of, the, of the catastrophe that happens in the, and the commotion of the car piled up uh, and so forth. Um, you know what a derail is uh, within our lives uh, when the three engines is pulling them um, and the other engine, uh, he gets sidetracked. Uh, you know what happens? Uh, all those other cars, uh, they start piling up. Uh, they get off track. Uh, they begin to make a difficulty. They begin to come in chaos. You know what those cars are? They derail because of fear, unbelief, uh, and hate, uh, and rebellion, uh, and bitterness, uh, and jealousy, and envy. Are you hearing me, church? It's called the devil himself that is out there to steal, kill, and destroy. But I'm saying to you this morning, church, if we're going to live the right kind of life, that means holiness is pure and true and wholesome. And if we'll live a holy life, Listen to me. Not living a holy life that is acceptable under Dave Kendricks, but a holy life that is acceptable under the Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord God Almighty through the Holy Ghost Spirit. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Glory. Glory to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Boy, y'all bringing about some fire in this old age. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me give you this right quick. and I'll bring this to a close. Now everybody say, oh me. I'm still anointed now. Okay? Amen. Let me give you this right quick. The third thing is here in that verse number 13, which is so loaded. Not only gird up the loins, but be sober, but it says hope to the end. Everybody say hope. You know what we've got to do? We must be hopeful. If we're hopeful, we know that this thing 
It's going to get stagnated. It's going to bog a lot of folks down. But I'm telling you, we can hope to the end. Jesus is our end. And if we can hope to the end, we must live as children of God. And if we live as children of God, guess what? We're going to act like children of God. And if we act like children of God, guess what we're going to do? We're going to find ourselves, it's just like, it's just like an engine. An automobile that, uh, that is running good, runs right, uh, it's going to have to have that engine serviced. Uh, I don't care if it's a brand new and after you drive it so long, you're going to have to change the oil. You're going to have to service that vehicle. If you don't service that vehicle, you keep on running. You go ahead and run it with all the all that oil, but sooner or later you're going to start hearing a that engine is just, just about to fade away with you. Because you know why? You're not taking care of the engine. I'm simply saying to you this morning, church, the engine has to be taken care of. The reason why a lot of engines... Don't be looking through the hole here. The reason why a lot of engines aren't being taken care of because they're not getting serviced. You know why they're not getting serviced? Because they don't come to the place where they can be serviced. By the power of the Holy Spirit, let us come to the place where we know what our hope is. Our hope is in Christ. And boy, we need the servicing of the Holy Spirit in our life. It ain't just here. But I'm going to tell you, He said forsake not the sin of yourself together, you know. It, it is part of it. But it comes to the place. Let me give you this. Uh, let me give you this because it tells us there in verse number 22. In verse number 22, He tells us this in the reading of our Scriptures in 1 Peter chapter 1. Everybody still with me now? Okay. Have you, have you got a third of this anyway? Okay. Buy the tape. I don't even know if we got a tape or not. <laughs> Amen. I'm still anointed. Verse 22. Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit. Now look at this. He says, unto unfeigned love. Everybody say unfeigned. You know what unfeigned means? Love without pretense. How many times have you... Uh, oh, I shouldn't say it. Yeah, I'm going to. How many times is it that your honey has kissed you and really didn't care about kissing you? Don't shout me down now. But there was a pretense in that kiss. Now, I understand when there's a little bit of a peck when you're going to be, you know, okay, I'll see you next, I'll see you, uh, you know, tomorrow, next week, or when you just got a little bit of a, a peck that is there. But you know what unfeigned love is? Unfeigned love is whenever you... <laughs> now I'm losing the anointing. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the unfeigned love that I bring this to a close. That brethren, what we do, we love one another with a pure heart reverently. That's what keeps us in the focus to where we are today. That's why I feel I need to come. That it's not without pretense. And I, I have already been preaching 30 minutes. Let me, let me give you one more thing that won't take me but just, uh, just a minute or two. Would that be okay? Deacon, stand by the doors and don't let them leave. Anyway, just give you this and I'm quitting. I, I promise you, I'm going to quit right here. Where are you in your holy life? It may not be what somebody else may see. I ran across this and I thought, hmm, I felt this in my spirit. It's called Pillars. There's a lot of pillars in the household of faith. 
There was a famed English architect named Sir Christopher Wren. He designed a large dome for a church which was so unique that he became the object of criticism among his colleagues. During the construction of this dome, they created so much fuss that the authorities demanded Wren add two huge supporting pillars to keep the dome from collapsing. Wren bitterly objected. But the opposition prevailed. And the two pillars were added. Fifty years have gone by. Wren dies. Through the controversial of the dome and the time that has taken place, it needs repainting. So what do they do? They realize they've got to give it a touch-up. The painters get ready and they build the scaffolds to get up to the place. They get up close to the top. And when they get up close to the top of those two beautiful pillars that were built there to help hold that structure up, the pillars being there, the painters find out they like two feet reaching the top of the structure. Wren was so confident in his building that it did not need reinforcement. And guess what happened? Because Wren stood firm on what he did. He was still gone. He had left this life. But because of what he stood firm upon, he felt secure and it stood firm. I want to leave this statement to you this morning. You and I, just how are you building your right kind of holy life this morning? Are you doing it with false pillars? Are you doing it with the real thing of the blood of Jesus Christ? Isn't that good? Hallelujah. 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 Bow your heads, close your eyes. Father God, thank you this morning for the blood. Thank you for your word. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for the grace we know is sufficient. Lord, we want to live holy and acceptable unto you. We know a lot of it has to do with a, a right attitude. Lord, we pray this morning, speak to our hearts, stir within our, our spiritual members this morning, God, that we can, we can find a way somehow to get refreshed to get revitalized, ever how it might be, might be stated within our own spirit man. I pray, Lord, let us leave this morning refreshed. Let us feel and realize that holiness is being a part of you and not by some type movement that could have went on. Touch you to move into your church, into your children, in the power of your just name. In your name, Lord Jesus, do this. Would you mind? Church, stand to your feet, would you please? And if you can't stand to your feet, okay. But I, I tell you what, this day and this hour, you can't get too much of these altars. Amen. Let's spend just a little bit of time before we leave this morning in talking to the Lord. And Lord, here's what I want you to do. In all that you do, you do ever how you feel led to do, but in all that you do, just simply pray, God, I just want to be holy unto you. And in that holiness unto the Lord, remember what I said, it's a continuing process. It don't stop. It's day by day. If you can, if you feel like it, slip out of your seats and let's come, let's come around the place to work. He says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercy of God, you present your bodies a living sacrifice unto the Lord.
which is holy and acceptable unto the Lord. Make yourself holy and acceptable unto Him this morning. God bless you. God bless you for your awesome response. Amen. Let's just talk to Him for a few minutes. We'll not belabor it. We'll not keep you long. But Lord, Lord, I want to be holy. I want to be holy and acceptable unto You, Lord. Lord, you are God, the Almighty God. We love you. We love you. Thank you, Lord. Do you feel better that you come to church now? Hallelujah. I'll tell you what, that's something the devil don't like, but that's why we came. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you. We appreciate you. Take this. Use it. It's not too hard. It's not too difficult. It's very simple. It's a day-by-day -day process. If you need to do some changing, you can do it with God's help. Not anything too hard for the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. Would you?
anything needs to be shared, any announcements or anything that maybe I'm unaware of. Okay? All right? Okay. God bless you. You've been an awesome, awesome congregation. We love you. We appreciate you this morning. Father, we love you. Thank you for each one. Let your presence be upon each one as we leave this sanctuary, but not your presence, Lord. Those by the way of live stream, Lord, your presence be upon them for the guidance that is needed in their lives spiritually as well, Lord. We pray this morning, God, that you would hear us uh, as we respond to you through the power of your name and the demonstration of your Holy Spirit. Lord, together in our closing prayer, Lord, we rebuke, we rebuke this coronavirus. We rebuke this pandemic thing in the power of your name. And we pray, Lord, your blood covering, your blood protection up over your children, up over your church. Those that are in this congregation, those by the way of live stream, that you'll protect us and to keep us into your care because you're the almighty God. Thank you, Father, for holiness. Thank you for giving us guidance as we yield to you now in Jesus' name to prosper our way. And everyone that loved the Lord together said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Let your neighbor know you love them and you care about them. Amen. Sunday morning, hallelujah, and it's lasting.